everyone, how are you doing? I'm here at the NAMM Show 2019 and next to me, the person that is next to me, be behind this uh, businessman, behind this uh, successful businessman, is a big, big heart and it's Joe, Joe Galzom. Joe, brother, how are you doing? Good, Lucas, how you doing? Amazing, yes, amazing. thank you. It's always, as I say every year, great to see you again. Thank you're you. You're too kind with your words. I appreciate that. Thank I, you. I mean it. I know you do. I, I sense that. I was talking with, with your wife and I, I sense that. You're a good man. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, it's and easier I, I, to be nice. Unless somebody does you wrong, but let's not go there, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, Joe. What are you uh, up to? Well, you're doing interviews. I just interviewed Carmine. Did you? I in saw the you the other. other did you? Oh, good. Yeah, and yeah, I yeah. saw you on Wednesday at the. Heavy Metal Rock uh, yeah. Hall, or yeah. whatever they call it there. That was good. You got some pretty good interviews there, yeah. I bet, right? Yeah, interview Lee Kerslake. Oh, no kidding. Which is, you know, excellent. It's hard to find. Yeah, yeah. Elusive. <laughs> yeah, elusive. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I'm happy that I got Carmine today. So, and we were talking about, you know, the cases and his new album and all the stuff he's doing. Yeah, he's a busy guy also, and as you know, I've uh, studied with Carmine and I've known him since 72. Yeah. So we go back a ways wow. and still enjoy watching him play every time we get that opportunity. You know, he's uh, it's a treat. He was your first in Dorsey, right? Yes, he was. And he stayed with you all these years? Yeah, he's been busy. He needs the cases and we take care of him and he takes care of us. But the first group of cases were made for him when he was with Rod Stewart. Yeah. And I recall delivering those personally to him out in Nassau Coliseum in Long Island. And pushing him backstage and it was a big deal, you know. Uh, and it was a lot of fun and he used them for many, many years and then uh, we upgraded the cases, he had some different sizes and such, so we got the old ones back and then are in our so-called library, yeah. <laughs> or yeah. museum, I should say. <laughs> I, I would like to know about a little bit of the history of, the, of the, the brand, you know. You started with, I mean, your family started with Anvil, right? Well, no, Anvil was started by uh, the Vallis family, a fellow named Chuck Vallis in 52, okay. as Acme Pack. Acme Pack was a packaging company uh, making skids and cardboard, not so much cardboard, wooden crates and things of that nature. And Chuck's two sons, Larry and Steve, were, uh, what do you call it, uh, just uh, uh, in the same group of folks that were starting to create rock and roll back in the late 50s, early 60s and 60s. Guys like the Beach Boys and ZZ Top and The Doors and Jefferson Airplane and, you know, on and on and on, uh, Three Dog Night, they were all buddies, so they were asking him if your dad could make us or can you make us cases, we have to go on tour and we need to protect our equipment. So that's how they started to evolve into the road case uh, manufacturing. And then uh, they continued on for up until the uh, mid 70s and they sold out to another fella that took it to a different place, uh, really built it up, uh, uh, made the Anvil brand even stronger, developed some different product lines. And then that fellow sold out in 88 to a corporate entity uh, and they didn't quite uh, know how to deal with it, a custom manufacturer. They were more into making lots of this thing and not one off or whatever it might be. And then we ended up acquiring Anvil in 1996 from this company. Oh, and we worked at it, negotiated a fair arrangement, and took them over in 96, and have worked with them, obviously, for 22 years now. And I, I was confused because you, we were talking about Carmine, you, you and Dorsey and uh, Carmine in 72. So how did you come up with that? I mean, with, with what brand? Well, Carmine didn't start. I started Calzone in 75. Calzone, yes. Yeah, and uh, Started that along with my brother and a good friend and my mom and dad co-signing a loan for us for 5,000 bucks so we could get started, rent a little place and work hard and that's how we developed that. We got involved with a guitar company back then that wanted to put their guitars and basses into our cases. So that gave us a nice steady flow of business and uh, then we discovered when this company went to NAM in, in 76 or 7, whenever that was, it was actually in Disneyland. 
at the Disneyland Hotel, which the entire convention center at that point was probably less than half the size of this room, one of these halls here at the Anaheim Convention Center. Companies like PV and Yamaha, the big names, they had little booths 20 by 20, you know? So that was op opened my eyes to this big world and we did some networking. One of our other big accounts was uh, Latin Percussion. Martin Cohen, who was the founder of Latin Percussion, I approached him and introduced myself, shared what we were doing, asking if I could do something perhaps for his congas or bongos, and he was nice enough to give us an opportunity, and we built a lot of cases for him for those products, as well as other percussion equipment. That's amazing. Yeah. Then our, what is going on right now? Tell me any news uh, with the company. Eh? Well, the biggest thing right now uh, is that we're moving our Anvil facility here from City of Industry to Covina, which is only about 15 minutes away. And when we were searching for new buildings, we wanted to make sure we were in a close radius so that our valued employees and folks who have been with us for 10, 20, 30, 35, one gentleman's been with Anvil for 40 years, we were still close so that, that we wouldn't lose anybody because these are fine craftsmen. Since you are moving, now you can build maybe uh, an entertainment room so we can go and play and, and, and maybe bands can play. We need that. That would be awesome. <laughs> we need to have an entertainment room so we can have jams and also filming and videos and yeah. see what else we could yeah. do to we talk about get it, our yeah. networking going a bit yeah. more, right? Yeah. We're a little bit shy on that part of it. I know you can help out. We, we gotta work out something. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's the biggest news as far as the company itself. Of course, product-wise, we're always developing new products, or at least trying to. We came out with a new uh, Forge guitar case, which okay. weighs 22 pounds as compared to 32 as our ATA plywood cases. That's good, so 10 it's, pounds? Yeah. It's a big difference. Yeah. And certainly with air travel as it is now, uh, you need to save as much weight as possible. Then to the other extreme, we're building a lot of what we call, or what the industry calls, Cadillac trunks which are basically work boxes that are three quarter inch Baltic birch plywood that are manufactured using our CNC routing system so that everything is very precise with the location of the holes and the, uh, the rabbit joints, everything is rabbit jointed together and then it's reinforced inside with an additional three quarter inch plywood, mm -hmm. same type of birch material. The bottom of the case is inch and a half plywood because these cases hold chains and cable and all kinds of heavy stuff, so it needs to really be uh, significant. Casters are four by two, rated at 700 pounds each. And by the time it's done, we coat it with a texture lac material to give it a nice heavy coating on the exterior to prevent scratching and abrasions and such, even though it does, but should it get banged up, it's just take some black paint and looks as good as new. And, yeah, and very, very, very um, handy. Yes, and we are working with uh, a number of different manufacturers here at the show. One of the more prestigious jobs is with Fender. Uh, they're reissuing a Jimmy Page Telecaster. Really? From 68, and they've commissioned us to manufacture the cases. So uh, we worked with the custom shop at Fender and developed this beautiful case to house this beautiful guitar a replica of the 68 version with some flowers and graphics on it, really cool, that Jimmy signed off on. And the case is two parts, actually. The top part has the guitar inlaid in the plush area. Then it hinges up and reveals the cables and the guitar strap and certificates of authenticity and some other accessory area. That's on display out there. And from what I understand, they've sold their first uh, run out uh, already and they may really? increase it, they may double it, so that would be fun. Wow, this is a smart move. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you get lucky. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's anything else you want to share with the, with the people that are watching right now? Well, as always, we're trying hard to continue to improve the product, to take good care of our valued employees as a company, uh, watching the environment, doing what we can to run a clean organization, and taking good care of our friends, the best customer service that you can offer. That's what sets everybody apart. You know, you have a quality product at a fair price, good delivery, but when something does go wrong, which we're all human, it does on occasion, then you need to fix it right away. Yeah. And rely upon good people such as yourselves and uh, being able to 
just continue on. So I appreciate your attention and looking forward to coming over for some macaroni. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We have pending that over the years. All right, thanks very much. Thank you. Good job. All right, Joe Galzon.